In the Australian government's latest bid to stabilize relations with China, Australian Foreign Minister Peng Yin Wong is on our way to Beijing. Wong is traveling to China for the first dialogue of its kind since 2018 as the Albanese government attempts to repair a strained bilateral relationship. Before embarking on the trip, the Australian Foreign Minister said she would raise concerns of trade tariffs when she meets her Chinese counterpart Wang Yi. Wednesday's meeting will mark the 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relationship between Canberra and Beijing. The dialogue also builds on Australian Prime Minister Albanese's recent meeting. The Chinese President Xi Jinping in Bali, Wang's trip to Beijing is expected to produce an agreement to restore a series of regular bilateral policy dialogues. She has, however, tried to temper the expectations, saying many of the hard issues will take time to resolve. But experts expect the meeting to lead to a possible rejigging of the relationship in near future. Experts say so far the new government in Australia under Prime Minister Albanese has been right to approach China and the rest of the region with a focus on shared interests rather than shared values. In previous high-level meetings of recent past, Albanese's government displayed a deft diplomacy that some say the previous government sorely lacked. The previous governments in Australia have some achievements, reorienting the China relationship to a more realistic footing, banning Huawei and other high-risk vendors from Next Generation Network, enacting landmark foreign interference laws and the AUKUS submarine deal. But experts say the diplomacy was not always strong enough to support their strategic intentions. In contrast, they say the way that current Foreign Minister Wang Yi has approached the region has been a breath of fresh air. In all of our speeches in the Pacific and Southeast Asia, Wong has been careful to talk about shared interests, much more than shared values such as liberal democracy. On the other hand, Wong is meeting audiences and trying to build alignment based on that. Wong has always regarded herself as a foreign policy realist. When she's talking to an American audience, there's much more talk of shared de democratic values but in her speech in Singapore in July this year, shared interests won the day. Although none of this has so far led to substantial achievement for Australia. But experts believe Australia's Indo-Pacific policy is on the right track. We were earlier joined by journalist Bang Shioi from Melbourne. He is a supervising producer of ABC China. Australia dealing with China um, should be balanced. Um, you know, uh, there are trade uh, tensions between Canberra and Beijing. Australian business uh, ex expecting um, Canberra could do something to fix up, you know, the cracks between um, two countries' uh, trade tensions. But at the same time, the human rights abuse and all of those issues around the detention of Australian citizens in China can be concerning for many uh, living in this country as well. So so um, for Canberra's move, as far as we can see, all of the dialogues and all of the conversations they had and media releases are more pointing out a more simple, symbolic um, kind of like a scenario uh, between two countries at the moment. We haven't seen any, you know, substantial move between two governments. But uh, having the fact, what is most likely more interesting to myself is that um, Foreign Minister Penny Wong and uh, her Chinese counterpart Wang he had um, almost, you know, this is the third meeting between them in the last six months, and plus also, you know, one phone call between them that is unprecedented. And um, I think um, from the Chinese side, it's where we have seen that the Chinese president Xi Jinping has, um, you know, got his uh, historic. Um, third term earlier this year, and um, that made his foreign policies more relaxed. So, in this, you know, kind of perspective, we will expect so there would be more uh, um, dialogue between China and Australia, and uh, we might can, you know, also expect um, the Prime Minister Albanese and President Xi to exchange congratulatory okay. messages for the anniversary of China-Australia relations tomorrow or the day after. We were also joined by Professor Bu Jiwe from Wellington. He's the director of the New Zealand Contemporary China Research Center, and this is what he had to say. 
I think the first, you know, this is going to be a first visit by uh, Australian foreign minister to China uh, in six years. I think this is going to be a, a you know, they're they're tentative. And they are going to test the water and see what is going on. But I think this is a mutually beneficial for Australia and China, because on the mind of the uh, Prime Minister uh, Albani, uh, you know, there are three priorities, trade, trade, and the trade. Because China is largest trading partner of Australia, taking about one third of the total foreign trade uh, of, of, the, uh, of the country. And China's mind, you know, on the mind of Chinese President Xi Jinping is three priorities as well. That's economy, economy, and economy. And, uh, you know, they just had two major meetings on Chinese economy. One uh, about in the Apollo Bureau meeting, and then uh, followed by another major uh, called a uh, Central uh, Economic Work Conference of a major conference that just uh, took place uh, a few days ago. So the focus of both countries are economic relations, not so much on these uh, security issues. So I think this is going to be a good start for both countries because they are both desperately need each other. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.